My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. A liturgy today offers us a selection from St. Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, it is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them, as they were able to understand it. Without parables he did not speak to them, but to his disciples he explained everything in private. Lord, we are here with you in private. Explain to us some things. Here in this passage of the gospel, Jesus, we have you saying twice, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. What is this kingdom of God? Because even in the first gospel offering, which is the Monday of the first week of ordinary time, the first gospel offering of ordinary time, out of Mark, again, you say, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand, believe in the gospel, this kingdom of God. And in the first Sunday Mass of ordinary time, which is the second Sunday of ordinary time, as they call it, you also say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What are you getting at, Lord? We are your disciples. Help us to understand the meaning of the words, the meaning of the parables, so that we can live what you want us to live, your life. Fun facts, fun facts. Did you know that the phrase kingdom of God occurs 122 times in the New Testament? Did you know that 99 of these occurrences are found in the Synoptic Gospels, that of Matthew, Mark, and Luke? Did you know that 90 of these 99 occurrences come forth from the mouth of Jesus? Yeah, wow. Maybe I missed counting these. There they are. And if you read the first volume of Emeritus Pope Benedict's book, Jesus of Nazareth, Volume 1, there you really get a lot of this understanding. But in our short time today, Lord, what do you want me to understand? I know that I am in the kingdom of God in one sense, for you have created everything, Lord. Through you all things were made, and we are of this kingdom in body, as we feel it every day, and in soul, as we know to understand, love, and think, an immortal soul for that matter. But nevertheless, like all other things, we are in this. But I think and I know that when you come among us, in the body, blood, soul, and divinity, you are trying to say more. Not that we are just in this world materially, but what is this kingdom of God then that we are in and called to enter? Saint Jose Maria gives us a little gloss in the scene when, Lord, you are at the shore of the Sea of Galilee, and all the crowd gathered round him, and he taught them. Jesus sees the boats on the shore and gets into one of them. How naturally Jesus steps into the boat of each and every one of us. When you seek to draw close to our Lord, remember that he is always very close to you, that he is in you. The kingdom of God is within you. You will find him in your heart. 
Christ should reign first and foremost in our soul, but in order for him to reign in me, I need his abundant grace. Only in that way can my every heartbeat and breath, my least intense look, my most ordinary word, my most basic feeling be transformed into a hosanna to Christ my King. Here St. Mosia Maria has invited us to consider perhaps a mystical or idealistic way that the kingdom of God is. And that's truly, we see the kingdom of God resides in the heart of man. Church Father Origen said, Those who pray for the coming of the kingdom of God pray without any doubt for the kingdom of God that they contain in themselves, and they pray that his, this kingdom might bear fruit and attain its fullness. Yes, this is one of the ways, Lord, of your kingdom. We can also think of it from your perspective, the Christological dimension. The kingdom of God is not a thing. It's not a geographical dominion like worldly kingdoms. It is a person. It is you, Lord. On this interpretation, the kingdom of God is itself a veiled way of looking at you, of understanding you, a Christology. When, Lord, you speak of the kingdom of God, you lead men to realize the overwhelming fact that in you, God is present among men, among women. In this world, you are God's presence. And perhaps a third dimension, very beautiful as well, an ecclesiological dimension. Here, Lord, your kingdom that you proclaim here and now is present in your church. Yet it is a mixed reality that will only be perfectly realized at the end of history. This mixed state can be seen as the church on earth, earth, which now grows in the field of the world with both weeds and wheat until the harvest. When, Lord, you will again tell the reapers this, Gather the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Yes, the church, your mystical body, that is the kingdom, and you're asking us to join into you, become into you. How beautiful is this teaching? Out of the book of Daniel, we can say with the prophet, His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all kings shall serve and obey him. Earthly kingdoms, kingdoms of the day, they push me, they coerce me. People, governments, societies, they push me. They push me hard. Lord, your kingdom works in another way. You ask, you petition. You came among us calling us, if any man would come after me, and we would, Lord, but it is a quiet way. St. Josemaria pushes us to meet you in that way. When he says, Christ should reign first and foremost in our soul. But how would we reply if he asked us, How do you go about letting me reign in you? He continues, He is our king. He desires ardently to rule in our hearts because we are children of God. But we should not try to imagine a human sort of rule. Christ does not dominate or seek to impose himself because he has not come to be served, but to serve. So help me to serve. Help me to see, yes, again, that, Lord, you are the kingdom of God among us, and that I beg you in grace to come into me. You, dwelling in my soul, I invite you in again, and help me to bring people into the church, that third way of your kingdom. Yes, help me to seek souls, to have this urgency, there's the story of the aftermath of a terrible bombing attack on a United States federal building in Oklahoma City a number of years ago. The awful bomb blast killed many instantly, but over a number of days, picking through the rubble, they were still finding the wounded and the still alive. After a few days, one of the officers came to a chaplain who was asked, to take care of the people there and the firefighters. And the officer said to the chaplain, 
A few hours ago, one of our firefighters found a young girl who was still alive, and he brought her out. He went back into the building about two hours ago, and he hasn't come back out. They then asked this chaplain if he would put on a fire suit and go into the building to see if he could find this guy. The chaplain did, put on the suit, went into the exposed rubble, the dust, the smoke, and he spotted the firefighter. Not wanting to startle him, he said quietly, Son, I just want to come and pray with you and get you to go in and take a break. As the chaplain moved closer to the firefighter, he could hear him mumbling, just mumbling something over and over and over. And he finally got close enough to touch him. He could understand the man's words. He was saying, Just one more! Just one more! Just one more! The man didn't want to leave until he'd found just one more. Lord, we ask you for this zeal for souls. One soul, another. Not so much out of guilt, though maybe we have wasted time in our life. But now, now for love. Just one more soul. Come with me into the kingdom. We invite them to pray with us, to come to read the word of God. We come to Come with me to discover, Lord, in the sacraments. Come with me to Jesus. We, we ask for this grace to have that zeal. Lord, grant it to us. This kingdom is you, is in us. It is your church. Let us be zealous about it. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help for putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me.